Good morning at this beautiful Sunday. Let's all stand together and sing hymn number 89, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Well, good morning, Wesley Way. You guys look fantastic, fantastic. Look to your neighbor and say, you look fantastic. <laughs> it is wonderful to see you here today. And I, I think it's safe to say that this is family here today. I was gonna say welcome to our guests, but I don't think that's an appropriate way to greet you this morning because this is family. Uh, Wesley Wayers that have uh, maybe been away or moved away and have come back and it's wonderful that we can be together this morning to worship. Um, just delighted, uh, delighted to have this time to celebrate. Uh, this is our 20th anniversary as a church this year and uh, what an accomplishment. Uh, uh, two decades of, of ministry that's been done in this church and in this community and in this world. Uh, four different pastors that you have had over the course of those 20 years. How many babies were baptized? How many youth went through confirmand, uh, confirmation class and became confirmands? Uh, how many weddings have taken place here? How many um, remembrances of life in, in funeral or in memorials that have been um, we, we gathered and we have grieved and supported one another together. How many Bible studies and Sunday school classes and vacation Bible schools and, and preparations for missions teams and, and on and on the list goes. So we, we give thanks this day, not just for what has been, but what is still yet to be. And we give thanks to God this morning. Uh, we also want to welcome those who may be watching with us online through Facebook. We're glad to have you here with us this morning as well. I just, if you would, if you'll uh, check in on your attendance pad, that just helps us keep in touch with you. Maybe you've had a change of address, change of an email, or you just want to put a little note for prayer. Um, fill those out and pass those down the line for us if you would this morning. We'd appreciate it. A couple of things to announce this morning, just a reminder, I think you're all aware there will be a wonderful, lovely cover dish that will be held right after worship this morning here in the sanctuary, uh, so I hope you'll stay and be part of that. If you're like, oh, I didn't know there was going to be a meal, I didn't bring anything, there will be enough. Please stay and eat with us. We are delighted to have you here. Uh, tomorrow, there is uh, finance at 6 o'clock, administrative council at 7. Uh, for those that are part of those teams, if you'll be sure to be here for those. Later today, our youth adult leadership team will meet at 4. And then youth have podunk tonight, which is their great opportunity to share all their favorite foods with one another and sort of have a Thanksgiving feast of all varieties, and Kevin brings the Pepto-Bismol, so uh, that'll be a delightful time tonight at 5 o'clock. Our Hanging of the Greens uh, will also be, have their rehearsal tonight at 5 p.m. Please make a note to mark that on your calendar. That'll be the last Sunday of the month on the 28th at 6.30 p.m. here at the church as our children lead us in worship and in song and as we celebrate together the beginning of our Advent season. Uh, there will be a cookie party at the closing of the uh, Hanging of the Green service, so we hope you'll, you'll come and be part with that as well. Uh, the last thing is our flowers. The flowers have been given this morning uh, to the glory of God in honor of our 20th anniversary as a church today. Let's have an opening prayer together. Most holy God, we thank you for Wesley Way. We thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning. We thank you for the labor and the work, for the, the service and the commitment, the devotion, the dedication that has been poured into this place, the prayers that have been lifted up here, the lives and the hearts that have been shared with one another. Thank you for your work, O oh God, in and through this church. Lord, we ask that you bless our service this morning that you would uh, continue to fill us with joy in your presence and that we would be renewed and filled with joy from our time with, together with one another. Uh, Lord, minister to us now in this time as we celebrate your great work in this place. Amen. here at the church, and um, all of us are going to take this opportunity this morning to share just remarks on our time and the time in ministry that we've had here. So uh, Reverend Kevin Barnes was not able to be with us here this morning, but he did prepare a video for us so that we could, uh, so he could share with us this morning, so we're going to watch that. Good morning, Good morning Wesley, Wesley and happy birthday. birthday. If we haven't met yet, I'm Kevin Barnes, and my honor to honor serve to Wesley, Wesley Way, Way, Way uh, for uh, three, years, three years, three brief three years, years from 2015 from to 2018. 2018. And, and if you, if you remember, remember, I came, I came in, in 
It's kind of an kind odd, of an odd entrance, entrance, and let's be honest, it was kind, kind of an odd up. exit. Uh, if you remember when I got there, um, I was appointed there, and I started officially on a Thursday. I preached the following Sunday, and the following Friday, I was gone for a month up to Kentucky to start my uh, doctorate um, studies up in Wilmore, Kentucky. And you were gracious enough to um, take me in even after that odd introduction. Um, just whenever I think back on uh, Wesley Way, I, I got to tell you, um, I think of all that was able to happen because of how awesome you are, the congregation, and that you are willing to say, yes, let's try it. Let's do this. Uh, we may fail, we may not, but we won't know until we try. And if you remember, you know, we, we had done stuff, the congregation has done stuff in the past for the community, but it had been a few years and we did Fun Day at Wesley Way. Out of nowhere, it was a smashing success. And we did it, did that a couple years. Um, we also rekindled the um, recreation ministry. Um, again, you know, that was wildly successful, but it had been a few years. And we tried it out with lacrosse. Honestly, who would ever thought, who would ever think lacrosse would do well uh, on the south side of Atlanta? And it did to. Uh, all of your credit for getting behind that and of course Tabitha's credit for leading the way with all of that and that was again another smashing success we had successes after successes all over the place why because you the congregation are awesome and you are willing to say yes another thing that happened um, is the turkey smoke uh, I know that's still going on. Why do I know that's still going on? Because I am initiating that here, and I talked to Lemmy, to Kevin Lemelin, just a couple days ago uh, to refresh me, remind me of, of how to do all that, and he lovingly shared all of the information uh, with me on that, and I know that that's still a wonderful success. Um, not only are you the congregation awesome for being willing to try things out but the leadership you have at that church um, I mean I was surrounded by top tier ministry leaders um, the best of the best with volunteers um, committee leaders even uh, you know speaking of Lemmy I mean you're not going to get any, you're not going to find anyone who is more dedicated to God, who is more dedicated to the kids and to the church than Kevin Limlin. Um, I know that she's transitioned out now, but you know, with Tabitha, my goodness, uh, the preschool and children's uh, ministry flourished under her. Of course, she was standing on the shoulders of Amanda and Cindy um, and just wonderful, wonderful people. Who are able to do wonderful wonderful things and yes I will even mention Ross although he has retired and uh, I talked to him the other day because he came up here to see a football game that Sam was doing with Cass High and all of that so I got to see him and Bethany and we you know, got to hang out and talk for a while and they got to see our daughters so bringing it back around to me a little bit um, Cavender, our oldest, is 17. She's a junior uh, over at Adairsville High School. Zarabel is 12 and she's in sixth grade. And little Brian, who learned to walk in the preschool room at Wesley Way United Methodist Church, um, she is definitely walking. She is everywhere. Uh, she is seven years old and she's in first grade. Um, at the local elementary school here at Pine Log Elementary. Um, we have settled up here nicely. Um, I know, again, it was an odd departure, but we, we landed on our feet, and it was, again, a very difficult decision, but we believe it was the right one. And um, I have a... Uh, I'm serving... Got a, a part-time at Adairsville First United Methodist Church, 
and um, I've got a side gig as the executive director at Hickory Log, which is a personal care home for men with intellectual and developmental disabilities, and um, we're, we're doing well, as I know you are too. Um, it, it was my honor when Brian Blanton called and told me about this and asked if I'd be able to come down or do a video. I can only do the video, sorry. But um, it, it is my honor and is my family's honor to have been able to serve and do wonderful ministry in McDonough, Georgia with the congregation of Wesley Way. Um, it was a great thing being there, but what made it even better was just the dynamics that were there. The, within the congregation, everyone was willing to try something new. Everyone was willing to do something. And I trust that that is the uh, continued heart of the congregation and um, you are still able to flourish and do great things because you are able to say yes this is where the Holy Spirit's leading me this is where we're gonna go um, so with that being said thank you again for the invite happy birthday and God bless Let's stand together if you'll join with me now as we celebrate a liturgy for the celebration of an anniversary. So we'll respond as a congregation where the parts are underlined. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. Give thanks to him. God has blessed us and brought us to this time. God has blessed us and brought us to this place. God has caused his name to dwell in our midst. God has stirred our hearts and made us glad. God has shown us his glory and his mighty word. God has shown us the way of truth and life. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to him. For 20 years, God has nurtured and fed us. For 20 years, God has shown us his grace. For 20 years, God has given himself in word and sacrament. For 20 years, God has empowered us with his Holy Spirit. For 20 years, God has made us his witnesses in the world. For 20 years, God has placed us in loving fellowship with one another. Praise the Lord for 20 years. Praise him for 20 more. Praise the Lord forevermore. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Let's take a moment now and greet those that are with us in worship this morning.
now that, now that you're good and seated, let's, I want you to stand for me. And we're going to, we're going to kind of count down um, our time, length of time here at the church. So um, if you have been part of this congregation for the last six months, remain standing. Everyone else would sit down. So, yeah, am I doing that right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you've, if you've been here longer than six months, you stay standing. Sorry, I think I did that wrong. <laughs> if you've been here longer than six months, you stay standing. Everybody else would then take a seat. All right, if you've been here longer than two years, keep standing up. Everyone else would take a seat. So if you've been part of this congregation, you've been here for longer than two years, you keep standing. If you've been here longer than five years, keep standing. Longer than eight years. <laughs> Ten. Twelve years. If you've been here longer than 15 years. Oh, that took a chunk of you down there. 18 years, 19 years, 20 years. If you've been here 20 years, which is the beginning. Look at this group. All right. yeah. Amen. Amen. Okay, you, you can be seated. I just thought it would be kind of fun just to see where we are and the time that we've had and ministry here in this church. Thanks be to God. Thank you for the ways that you've, you've served and uh, that all of you have been connected to and been part of what's taken place here. Uh, I also want to just take a moment now to recognize uh, John and Greg for being here this morning. The mic. Uh, just to thank them that they, it, to, to leave your pulpit and come someplace else means someone else has to be taking care of all of the things that you do in your congregation. Um, and so I'm just very thankful to them for taking the opportunity to be here and, to, um, and for their ministry here in the church. So let's just recognize them this morning and give thanks. All right. Uh, well, now if our children will come forward, Mr. Michael is going to have a children's moment with our children down here at the front. If you'll come and gather. Good morning, boys and girls. Oh, we've been through those. Come on. Let's hear it again. Good morning. Good morning, boys and girls. Okay. Are you all excited? Y'all don't sound very excited. I've got a question for you, and this may not apply to everybody, and I understand, but how many of you have a birthday? Some of you? You all have a birthday, right? And what do y'all do on your birthday? Celebrate yourself? Good. Y'all have a party? That's right. It's like an anniversary of your birth, right? Is there a party? And cake and presents? And in general, is it pretty? And cupcakes, right. Is it? And cookies. I love cookies. Is it an exciting time? Because you're celebrating yourself. You're celebrating another year, which is kind of like an anniversary. Guess what today is? Our church is having a birthday. How many of you are older than 20 years old? <laughs> Besides me, that's right. So 20 years is kind of a long time, right? All right, so here's another question. How many of you know and have heard the stories of the disciples? What are disciples in the Bible? Okay, Jesus' friends. Uh, yep, there were at least 10. There's 12 of them in the Bible.
people that follow and worship God, follow Jesus? You forgot. Jesus' followers. So do you think everybody just woke up one day and said, oh, there's this guy, Jesus, and we're just going to follow him? You think that's how it worked? No, he's walking along, and a couple of those disciples, and he sa- uh, they ask him, they're like, well, where are you going? And you know what he said? Follow me, and you will see. And then the next day comes, and some more conversations, and they're like, well, where are you going? Where are we going? Follow me, and you will see. And you know what? Over 2,000 years later, we're still learning and reading about him in the Bible. But here's a secret. You want to know a secret? You can't tell anybody. We, you, each of you, are also called by Jesus to follow Jesus. Did you know that? Right. So in doing that, if somebody, if I, if you were to meet me on the street and say, and I said, hey, just follow me, what would you say? No. Be like, where are you going? I don't want to follow you. We're not supposed to talk to strangers. But God tells us to follow him. Jesus calls us to follow him. And in doing that, we don't know where we're going, right? We don't know where God's leading us. But we do it because we trust in God. Twenty years ago, before you were born, some people came here. They followed God. This church was built. It became Wesley Way. And because of what some people did 20 years ago, you are here today. I am here today. And did you know in 20 years from now, you could be right here leading a children's moment? You just have to trust God. Even though we don't know exactly where he's taking us, we trust in him, right? All right. Well, let's have a quick prayer. Let's put our praying hands together. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for leading us. Thank you for teaching us to trust in you and follow you no matter where you lead us. Bless us in the service today, and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, as the children leave for school, I guess they're not leaving. Okay, they're going back to their seats. As the children go back to their seats. I would just like to share with you, uh, first of all, thank you for all the ways that you continue to support Wesley Way. Um, Most of you know that donations can be dropped off during church hours, mailed to the P.O. box, uh, gifted by the uh, Vanco um, and and, the weekly email and our newsletter basically tells you the the address to do that as far as a link. And today, we are actually going to be passing the plates uh, for offertory in an attempt, as you can see, the church back to some kind of normalcy. So we're all out of practice on that, so have some patience. And now if you could just please join me uh, with me now in the litany of thanksgiving. O Lord, our God, for our vision of those who dreamed and worked for this congregation to come forth and for the commitment and dedication of all who served together at the time of origin. We give thanks to you, O Lord. For those who have served so faithfully in leadership positions as pastors, staff, leadership team members, and volunteers, we give thanks to you. For those who have willingly given up efforts to teach, encourage, and console, We give you thanks, O Lord. For those who have been such a part of our fellowship for so many years and now serve you in church triumphant in heaven, we give thanks to you. For the ways in which we have been able to care for one another, support one another on the journey of life, and give strength to one another, we give you thanks, O Lord. For baptisms, we've celebrated professions of faith we have heard, and <clears throat> excuse me, answers to prayer that we have experienced. We give you thanks, O Lord. For a congregation that has always desired to worship you faithfully and vibrantly, hearing your words, singing your praises, and seeking your strength. 
We give you thanks, O Lord, for a commitment to teach, study, and follow your word. We give you thanks, O Lord, for all the children and the youth have been who have been trained in the ways of the Lord and now love and serve him. We give you thanks, O Lord, for generosity that has enabled us to reach far beyond this community with the word and the witness of the gospel. We give you thanks, O Lord. Receive now these gifts we bring that we might be pleasing that they might be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, and further the work of this church for your kingdom purposes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Ushers.
I wanted to, we're going to invite now Reverend Greg Meadows to come and share about his time here at Wesley Way. Greg served here eight years from 2007 to 2015 and is now up in Jasper, Georgia, the Jasper UMC Church, and we're glad to have Greg this morning. It's good to see you. Faces so familiar from all the opportunities and the times we spent together. Thank you. It's good to see you. As I look out and see faces that are very familiar, and I see faces of folks who are looking back at me going, Who in the world is that person? But that's the blessing. That is the blessing. That is the blessing of church. That is the blessing that church should be. And I was very honored when Brian called and talked to me about coming and and being a part of today. And there was just something inside of me that said, Greg, you need to go. You need to go. So I'm here to say thank you. I'm here to say thank you for a staff that I came into, John, that were phenomenal that I enjoyed every moment that I got to spend with each and every one. The ones that were here when I got here and the ones that we transitioned as they had transitions in their lives and we hired. It was an honor and a privilege to serve with each and every one of them. And they were my family. That's what staff becomes, is your family. And I was thankful for them. I wanted to say thank you for a youth group that my children grew up in. Serving in Waleska, we had very few teenagers. Rebecca, our oldest, was a teenager moving into middle school while we were serving in Waleska, and she kept wanting to be a part of a youth group. She kept wanting to be part of a youth group. Why? Because when she was a year, from the time she was a year old till she was six years old, she was the youth group mascot at Thompson United Methodist Church <laughs> because she went every week because that's what I did. So she was there. She knew what a youth group was like. And she wanted to be part of one. And I would pray, Lord, help me to find a way for my child to be involved in a youth group. Little did I know that that meant that we would end eight years in Waleska and be moved to the south side of Atlanta to serve at the Wesley Way United Methodist Church where there was already a vibrant youth group thriving. Thank you also for a youth group and a community and a place that has brought into our lives two wonderful young ladies who are now my daughter-in-law's that my boys met while growing up here in this place and the blessing that they have been to our family. Thank you for allowing my son to come and be an intern in your youth ministry after I had gone, after I had been moved, that inspired him to come home and go to Reinhardt and get a degree in religion and working now in a United Methodist Church in North Georgia doing children and youth ministry. Thank you for a place where my wife had some of the most exciting years of teaching school under an amazing principal who became an amazing friend. Thank you for that. Thank you for teaching me that as a church we can do anything. And why do I say that? Many of you sitting out here this morning may not know the struggles that we went through in the midst of some of the hardest financial times in the country. Cutting $100,000 from the budget. Working our way back up to the years that that we were moved, you were able to go back to 100% of apportionments. Working and working to make that happen. But never stopping ministry. Thankful for a staff who are willing to go without a raise for six years and continue to do ministry in a tremendous way. It taught me that when we are faithful, God is 
faithful. And I want to encourage you today to remember that yourself. To remember that when we are faithful, God is always faithful. And the church made it through all that time together. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about people. And all of that has been helpful as I've went from here to Jasper. Had the opportunity to serve there now for in my seventh year. Plan to return, but we all know how that works. <laughs> we all know how that works. I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning and to celebrate with all of you the faces that are familiar and the faces who do not know who I am. It is an honor and a privilege to be here, to spend these moments with you and to celebrate a legacy that had a beginning. And we pray that God will lead it till it has no end. Now and forevermore, amen? Amen. Now let's sing together hymn number 61, Come Thou Almighty King. time to share in our joys and concerns in our time of prayer today. What things do you have that we might lift up together in celebration and in, in grieving? Mm -hmm. Cassie? Mm. Mercy. Okay, prayers for Jean O'Brien, 97, uh, but suffering a stroke. And I see you. Okay. 
um, continue to keep the family and, and the co-workers, the officers of, of Officer Desai, um, who was killed in the community in the line, in the line of fire and his, in his, um, through his work. Um, that was a, 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 a strange honor, I guess, this morning to stand um, as the, the um, procession went past on Highway 81 this morning. And um, I don't think I've ever seen that many police um, vehicles all in one conglomerate. And they were from all over. They weren't just from Henry County. They were from all over the state. Um, so prayers for uh, that family. Keep uh, Wendy Evans in your prayers as well. Uh, she will have her gallbladder surgery on Wednesday. Uh, so if you will lift her up. Keep Terry Adams in your prayers. She had um, some uh, surgery, skin cancer surgery this week that went well, and she's recovering from that. Ask for your prayers for her. And then keep uh, Cheryl and Vic Fox in your prayers. Vic has been um, going through some uh, testing, and they've uh, decided that he has dementia and something that's called Lewy body dementia, which affects the body much the way Parkinson's affects the body. Um, so if you'll keep, keep them in your prayers, um, it just, it's a, it's a difficult road that's before them and they'll need a lot of love and support from us. Uh, if you'll, if you'll keep Vic and Cheryl in your thoughts and your prayers. Other things this morning. Yeah. Tabitha. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Wow. Yeah, our sympathies are with you, Diane. Um, as we mourn Darlene Ford, we've been praying for her as she's passed now, passed away. Mm. Okay, thank you. Um, Elisa Henriksen in our office, her stepmother has um, been going through cancer uh, treatment and um, they have now brought in hospice care, um, so if you'll keep her family in your prayers, um, her stepmom is Melanie Henriksen, and um, she lives in Arizona, so that's difficult as well, not being able to be there close with her dad and stepmom, but if you'll be in prayers for her and the, and the family. Uh, there was another hand. Yeah, uh, Dorothy. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we celebrate with Dorothy's daughter who has just completed her master's degree in the midst of COVID, in the midst of being a mom and, and taking and doing all of that. Um, but it's, uh, she's doing it in uh, school counseling, being a school counselor. So prayers for her as she goes into our school system um, and helps, helps our kids. Yeah. Great. What else? Yeah, Cassie, another one? Mm. Okay. Ruby Bastion's first cousin passed away. Say the name again. Thank you for Bonnie Sue. Okay. I'm sorry for your loss. Are there others behind me? Okay. Anything else this morning? Yeah, Carter. Absolutely. Praises for today. It is a good day. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Yeah. Although you got a ways to go, Wesley Way. The last church I served celebrated 150 years <laughs> as a church. So we, we look forward that God would be so gracious to us that we might continue on 100 more years. Wow. Yeah. So we celebrate. We celebrate. Look what God has done. We can only imagine what is still yet to be, right? Let's go to the Lord together then in our prayers.
Oh, Lord, you have been good to us. And your favor is upon us. And we say, blessed be the name of the Lord. That even when the nights are dark and mournful, and things are not as we wish them to be, yet still we will say, blessed be the name of the Lord. For you are good, O oh God. And your mercy never fails. And every morning we are renewed by your mercy and your love and your forgiveness towards us. In fact, we don't have to wait for the sun to come up to receive your forgiveness. You offer it here and now. What a great God you are. Father, Son, and Spirit, that you should take note of us, that you should work your prevenient grace in our lives, that you have gone before us, before we even thought to know you or to seek you out, that you were pursuing us. And that you have brought us to a place where we have come to understand and know that you are working your salvation in us. That you have redeemed us from our sins. And you are making us holy. Thank you, O oh God, because we know and recognize there is still work to be done in us. We know and we recognize there is still work to be done in this church. We know and recognize there is still work to be done in this community and in this world. Use us, O oh Christ, that we might be your hands and your feet, that we would be your voice, that we would speak the good news, that we would do the work that you have prepared in advance for us to do, and that your kingdom would prevail because of our efforts here. Lord, we give thanks for those who have gone before us, for those who had the vision and the foresight to say, let's do something new, and stepped out on faith and came to this place. And for those who have continued to be faithful, dedicated, committed to this place and to the work that you are doing here, uh, we give thanks, O oh God. Continue to raise up your leaders, Lord. Continue to raise up volunteers and servants and pastors and uh, children and youth and staff that would continue to bring forth your work through this place. May this place always be a place of hope, of peace, and of the good news of Jesus Christ. Lord, we've called out names of, of friends and loved ones this morning. They're suffering and mourning the loss of family members, close friends, police officer. God, that you might bring us comfort as we mourn. That you might bring us your peace. Help us as we sit with what is difficult and what is hard and what is painful. Comfort us, O oh God. And Lord, we celebrate today. We celebrate with birthdays and anniversaries and um, accomplishments, achievements. We give you thanks. Lord, we ask that you would be with these that are sick and that are suffering, that are battling with cancer, that are battling with uh, various diseases and illness, surgeries and um, injuries, uh, bring forth healing, O oh God, and, and recovery. But Lord, not just in our body and our flesh, but in our spirits and our minds, heart, body, and soul, Lord God, that you would restore and redeem us. And, and, uh, and over all things, God, may we know that we are forgiven, that you have forgiven us, and you invite us into a new relationship with you. And no matter what any of us has done, or, or not done, that you offer us forgiveness. Free us for joyful obedience, O oh God, that we might walk in your ways, that we might receive your forgiveness and go forth in newness of life. Lord, as we go into this week, um, may we not live in what is behind us, what has been done, celebrating in glory days, but look forward to what is still yet to be, and that we would see every day as, as a day that we are building along in your purposes. So keep us alert. Keep our eyes open to see where you're working, that we might join you there. And help us to be, uh, to be faithful and to be obedient, to be courageous and to be bold, to be visionaries, to work for you. 
And Lord, we pray now as you have taught us to pray. When we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, it's my honor and joy to uh, welcome this morning our founding pastor here at Wesley Way, Reverend John Purrington. John served here for six, seven years. Six years. Six years. From 2001 to 2007, and is now currently serving at the Monroe uh, First United Methodist Church. And we're honored to have he and his family here, as well as the, the Meadows family also this morning. So we invite him to come and share with us this morning. Good morning, church. Would you stand as we get ready to hear the gospel this morning? I'll read first and then I'll reflect and talk second. Is that fair enough? It's great to see everybody this morning. I wanted to, on this day, go back to a, a text that invites us to look hard the call of the church, what it always is in every time and place. And so it's a call story from John's Gospel. John writes, the next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, the Lamb of God. When he saw when they heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following, and he asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. And so they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and to tell him, we have found the Messiah. That is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and he said, you're Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter, Jesus called Philip and Nathanael. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, Nazareth. He said, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked, come and see, said Philip. The word of God for the people of God. You. Would you please be seated? It's a, it is a grace sincerely to be here. I want to thank Michelle. I want to thank um, Kevin, I want to thank Greg and Lydia for all that I don't recognize this morning. I am profoundly grateful. And for those I do recognize and had the grace of walking with, it is a treasure and a blessing to see you again. And allow grace, sometimes it takes me a few moments, it's been 14 and a half years, to remember my, you know, I, I was thinking about this. In the beginning, uh, there was not smartphones when, when I first began to serve here, and so I just remembered everybody's name and their phone number kind of in my head. I didn't write it down. Times have changed. I remember less. 
a lot less. I wanted this morning to reflect on a message that I think applies to all of us at any time, wherever we are. I'm sure there are some who, who were a part of founding the church who were listening online this morning, and I'm so profoundly grateful for you as well. We give thanks today for what God has done, for God's faithfulness, for the blessing of God leading all of us by faith to this point. So I want to start with this as we think about where we're going, because that's really what I want to reflect on today, and I'll share a few remembrances, but I do think it's more important to reflect on where are we going in God's call and God's claim in our lives. You, you may have heard this quote, uh, Senate, uh, former Senate champ, uh, chaplain Richard Halverson once reflected on the church in a prayer before the Senate chamber. And he said, Christianity began as a movement within the Jerusalem church. And then it grew to become, in Greece, a philosophy. And then it, it grew to become, in Rome, an institution. And then it be, became, when it reached Europe, a culture. And then he said these words, which I will always remember. And then it came to the West... And it became an enterprise. And I say this to start this morning. The church of Jesus Christ is always a movement among people. From one heart to another with the good news, the great news of God's love in Jesus Christ. Andrew's the hero in my mind of this early story. I'm going to talk about him this morning. I want to reflect a little bit on beginnings here. Michelle had asked, would you reflect a little bit? And I'll, I'll do that just a touch. Beth came pregnant with Ian to the church. I remember trying to get everything settled on the one hand and make my wife happy and be a part of a group that was ready to go. Ready to go forward. I remember uh, the steering team. Wasn't that what it was called? The steering team of 15 leaders. Bob Bailey led us so faithfully and I remember those short meetings that maybe went, I don't know, three, three and a half hours. <laughs> every month or every week or whatever it took as we began. I remember, so here's something that, that I will always remember. I had been trained to start churches, which means very little, by the way. It means that you went to about 10 meetings in a year. I've been trained to start churches and to do refresh churches that needed a new start. And I had just come, I had just come when I came here from a church that was failing. And I came defeated to start a new church with all of you who were so excited. I will never forget the grace that you gave to me, probably unaware. I was trained so well, I couldn't even kill a church when I tried to kill it. <laughs> I wrote a recommendation as I left the church before saying, I believe the best thing for this church is to be closed. And the conference and their wisdom at that time said, no, we'll keep going. 
But I came wondering, quite honestly, about my own call in ministry as this church had her beginning. And what you did for me in my life It's without. I cannot express the gratitude for the grace that was given. So in all my training, that's my serious moment, church. In all my training, um, they, they said, now you got to prepare for a launch. You get your core group together and you study and you get ready to launch, and you know, you take 10 months or a year, but this is the most critical work of bringing everybody together. And um, I, they told me in no uncertain terms, um, we are worshiping the first Sunday that you are here. That's when we are launching. And so church started over at Ole Elementary School the very first Sunday. Now we we had to um, lay down some ground rules in the cafeteria there. After the first two or three weeks, you could no longer bring lawn chairs that lean back <laughs> in worship. You think I'm kidding. <laughs> I remember the strong call of reaching others for Jesus. What was so beautiful about this church in her infancy and what I call each of you back to today was there was a passionate call to reach the next person because you believed the gospel of Jesus Christ mattered more than anything. And you were selfless, and you were generous, and you were passionate, and you were a blessing. You reached out beyond yourselves with an Andrew ministry, and so many lives were touched. I think we were in the Ola Elementary School cafeteria for 19 months. That's my best memory. Now I do remember this. One of the saints um, that is not here with us now, and, and he was a close, close friend of mine, stood up in our first meeting over in the McDonough Church as I was being introduced with the district superintendent, and it was just kind of a get-to-know meeting and there was about 80 adults, 100 adults, and, there, and, and kids and family. And there was one tall person who said, um, I just want to know when we're going to build a building at the start. And that was my introduction to Conrad Keel. And I, I treasure this. I will say this about Conrad. Um, we became close. He came into the office, my office, which was a small little house on Highway 81 until we got in this building. And I worked very closely with Sandy and very closely with, with Clara. I want to recognize Clara for a moment. Clara served as, for five years as our first administrator with no pay. Would you just, just to bless this church. And Sandy worked so hard as, as one of our first leaders, so much in the office, again, for years, with nothing but just the blessings of what was happening in the church. Would you say thank you? And I was so young, I felt like they raised me in the office. I remember the, the blessings... Um, Steve and Kim, every Saturday morning of unloading chairs about 9 o'clock and loading them back. And then the, us thinking when we finally got here in this place, we'd be done moving chairs. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh my, and I remember this, the, the deep thought I had the time when 
we all, all thought, um, boy, we can't wait to get out of there. And I, and I said, there's going to be a day that you miss the beginning, the beginnings of working so hard in the school. And I remember the day I heard that. It was almost like, uh, you know, the Israelites saying, you know, was, we, we just need to go back to Egypt where there were three squares a day. But I challenge us this morning, look forward, not back. Because that's always the call of the gospel. So I, I like that this text begins with this. Andrew is introduced wonderfully by John in the gospel as one of the two disciples who were John the Baptist's followers John says John says look the lamb of god they leave him and begin to follow now as they begin to follow Jesus turns and he asks what he often does a very critical question for us for them and for us he asks questions like this like what do you want And they said, to see where you were staying, which is code. It is code for teach us your life, your way. Help us to understand you. Jesus has come and follow me. At that point, we don't know who they are, but John then says, Andrew was one of the two. But he introduces them like this. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Not Andrew the intellectual. He doesn't say Andrew the one who is a passionate disciple maker. He's related only to his brother. Does any, can any of you ref- connect with that? being known only through maybe your spouse in a setting or only through your sibling somewhere. We only get a picture of Andrew three times in the Gospels. It's really, really fascinating how little we know about him and yet how powerful his ministry was. But he's introduced as Simon Peter's brother, like we should know. Now, that leads us to ask, why why is he connected so strongly to Simon, the one that Jesus would call Peter? And as we begin to see beyond the call, what we find is this, Simon Peter Peter, James, and John become the three that are deeply connected with some of the most intimate moments with Jesus. Peter and John are the ones who are invited, uh, uh, John and, and, and James are the ones that are invited in when Simon Peter's mother was sick with Jesus. Not Andrew. Peter, James, and John are the ones who were invited when Jairus, the synagogue ruler, comes to Jesus and says, My daughter is dying. We are told specifically in Mark's gospel that it is Peter, James, and John who were invited to go with Jesus No one else, not Andrew. Peter, James, and John are the ones who were blessed to be taken up on top of the mountain when Jesus was transfigured before them, where they were charged, do not tell anyone what you saw, not Andrew. Peter, James, and John were the ones who were taken to the Garden of Gethsemane, 
right before Jesus was arrested, it was Peter, James, and John who were invited to pray with Jesus. Of course, we know they failed him and they fell asleep. Not Andrew. Peter, James, and John go on in their own way to become uh, some of those that stand out in the early church history. Peter would become the church's first unequivocal leader and spokesman, preacher to Gentiles and to Jews, calling them to faith. The movement of the Spirit in Peter's ministry in the church is all told through the book of Acts. Andrew's not in the book. It's not in the book. James would become the unquestioned leader of the Jerusalem church where he would preside over everything and he would faithfully serve until as they all were eventually martyred. John would go on to become the church's prolific writer. Writer of the gospel, the one who saw himself as beloved in Jesus, the one who would write the letters to the church, John's the one who would give the command that touched my heart, and I bet it has touched yours, where he tells us he so closely connects the life of Christ with this new command to love one another. In all of his letters, John was the one that would outlive them all, the the last living disciple, apostle, who was exiled would be the one to also to see the revelation, not Andrew. Andrew, though, his story is told in three moments, three quick reflections in John's gospel. Here, in this very powerful story, we're tempted just to read past it, but he sees Jesus and we're told the first thing he did was to go and get his brother and say, we've seen the Messiah. The first thing. We come to Scripture, we come to Scripture four ways, I've been taught. We hear it read in a place like this. It's long been the tradition of the church, the times where people... Uh, were not as literate, the word would be read and people would come to the church or to the synagogue to hear the word. So we hear it, we read it, we read the word and I'll challenge you, if you want your life to be changed, transformed, read the book, the beginning of each day, I will just tell you, some, some will say that they can read it at night, but I've learned that everyone that makes personal worship a part of their life, and that is the glue that changes lives, transforms lives, makes that the first thing they do. So if I could challenge you with one thing, it's read the Word before you fall out of bed, before you do anything else and forget about it. If you've moved away from that practice just a little bit, let today be the day you come back to it. So we hear the word, we read the word, we study the word. Study has great value. And then the last way is we memorize. And I think this verse, John's Gospel, verses 41, 42, are significant. Hold them in our memory. The first thing Andrew did when he saw, when he had met Jesus, 
he went to go get Simon. He said, this is the Messiah. And he brought him, the last part of that verse is, he brought him to Jesus. Those are the words that I want you to take away today. First, because you've done that as a church, what I experienced when you were here was a passionate outreach. You wanted other people to know the Lord who loved you. And so you'd reach out and say, come to church with me. Come be a part of the choir. Come be a part of uh, of the children's ministry or the youth group. Come be a part of the preschool. Midge, didn't you used to teach that little song? I was just thinking about this. Peter, James, and John in a sailboat. (laughs) I was thinking about that. Was Andrew in the song? No. But you had a heart like Andrew's. And it's what makes the church vibrant in any day and any age. So this is the first story right here. Peter, Simon brought, Andrew brought him to Jesus. The next story John records in the sixth chapter. It's one of those great stories. We know it is the feeding of the multitude. And Jesus, he tests, he tests Philip in the story. Jesus had been teaching for a long time. There was a great crowd that came to follow him. And uh, he, uh, Philip said, you know, I'm concerned about everyone. How are they going to eat? Jesus said, you give him something to eat. And, And the story says, testing him, testing him. Jesus testing Philip. And then Andrew appears on the scene. Andrew brings a boy, a boy to Jesus. And he says, "Um, here's a boy with five loaves of bread and two fish. I always thought as a fisherman, it should be turned around. There should be five fish and two loaves of bread, but that's what it is. And then he says, but what can be done among so many? He brought a boy to Jesus. We read past that. How unique is that? How strange is that? How wonderful is is that? Of all the people that Andrew would bring, he brought a boy. He brought him to Jesus. Now there's a last story. It's recorded right before Jesus, um, the passion narrative, before he's uh, crucified. And there were some Greeks there for the Passover celebration. Greek God-feeding worshipers. John tells us. It's in chapter 12. It's really interesting. Um, Philip is involved in this story too, as he often is with Andrew. Philip becomes the broker. He comes and hands the Greeks to Andrew, who then takes them to Jesus. They wanted to see Jesus. Andrew takes the Greek God-fearing worshipers to Jesus. Makes, Makes me wonder, why didn't Philip do that? But then I think, well, it it had to be, there had to be something in the faithfulness of Andrew and the closeness of the relationship. He had met Jesus in the very beginning. He saw who he was and he was moved. I want you to think about this for a minute. Andrew brought his brother and a boy and some foreigners to Jesus. He brought family. He brought the future child. And he brought those who were outsiders. 
all to see the Lord. His life is told, and I'm sure of this, that these are just the three recorded stories. (laughs) These are just the three that are recorded. His life is told in bringing people to Jesus because he met him. His whole life is sold out. Andrew had no problem playing second fiddle. It's a reminder to us of the call. We bring people to Jesus so that they can be saved. We bring people to Jesus so they can experience forgiveness. We bring people to Jesus so that they can experience love. We bring people to Jesus so that they can find hope. We bring people to Jesus so that they can experience new life. We bring people to Jesus. We bring people to Jesus so they can see their future. Oh, church, we bring people to Jesus so they can be healed. So that they can be healed of their past. So that they can be healed of their sin. So that they can be healed of their struggles and their sickness so they can be healed of their sorrow, so they can be healed of their addictions, so they can be made well. The Greek word for salvation literally means not just saved, but to be healed. Andrew's life was poured out in bringing people to Jesus. That's the work of the church. That's the work we're always called to. That's the work we've got to get back to. Amen? That's the work that leads to to life being made new in surprising ways. Church has never been about coming to worship and going home and going through your week. Church is about coming to Jesus and glorifying God, sharing in the experience of matchless love and bringing others to it. I'm so glad that Andrew's name is recorded, even if it's as the brother of Simon. I hope for the future of this church that you will make bringing people to Jesus your call, your all, that it will become your heart. God will bless that any time and space. God will bless that. God will bless that. And Andrew Ministry. And I want to say this. You brought me to Jesus when I came here. And I will be forever grateful. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let's stand together and sing hymn number 580, Lead On, O King Eternal.
section this morning. I do want to just say thank you to our 20th anniversary team that helped bring all this together. Sheila Mason uh, helped organize all of us, and Jean Bouts helped organize all of the food things that are about to happen, and we give thanks for their work in that. Also, take note, there are lots of things out in the hallway. There are the names of the children that have come through this church and little feet all over the floor. Uh, there are historical kind of documents and old directories on the tables out there. And then we also are trying to put together kind of a time capsule to put our thoughts together that we might bury that and unearth it years down the road to remember our thoughts and memories of this church. There are cards for that that are on the back, and we'll have an opportunity for that while you're eating to share those thoughts as well. Now I want you to receive this benediction. Dear friends, go forth from this place, not looking behind you, but looking before you at where Christ is leading us, that we would continue to be his hands and feet and be obedient unto him in all things. Go enjoy in the love of the Lord. Amen.